idea for us to talk about this because uh, I was around for uh, some of the early stages of uh, James's career and then some of the later stages and since the book is about actors and uh, all of the uh, obstacles and insanity of trying to do this. Actually, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even clarify that even more. Um, so this book is, yeah, about, a lot of it is about... Um, Actors, it's actors at all stages, but a lot of it is about actors, you know, coming to LA uh, fresh and struggling and all, of, you know, everything they go through. And actually, I think I've wrote to you about this before. Like, you were there at like these key moments in my career. First with Freaks and Geeks was basically the first amazing show, and for me personally, it was like the first good thing that I was actually a part of as an actor. And then, oh, although, wait, sorry, I don't want to, <laughs> Judd's daughter is here and she loves everything, so I don't want to, I did that before Freaks and Geeks. But, um, and then you were there when I, you know, uh, did Pineapple Express, basically, you gave me that job. And that was actually a huge turning point in my career because... Up until that point, I saw myself as a you know very serious young actor, and I think I was doing a lot to hurt myself because I didn't have perspective on you know the bigger perspective of what it is you know for a group of people to come together and work on a project. I was still kind of stuck in I need to do this for me, and it's about my performance. And um, and Pineapple Express really showed me like you can just let it go and you can relax and you can actually have fun making these things and it can still be like a good movie. And, and, it's, and my career's you know, been, never been the same after that. Um, and I, I really owe, so it was never the same after Freaks and Geeks and then it was also changed after that movie. And so it seemed to change your acting as well yeah. because you found uh, this lighter side of your personality yeah. that maybe you hadn't shown as much before then. Like, did yeah. you realize, like, oh, there's this, too? Were you afraid to be that vulnerable or light? Or what, what do you think was released at that time? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's, in, um, a lot of it's image. And I think, I think it has a lot to do with the book because, I mean, I'll, I'll try to tie it to the, to the book. It's like um, I was very concerned as a, as a young actor, you know, uh, about how I was perceived. And I tried to really control that, not only within the movies, but also, you know, in the press or whatever. And, um, and I think to a certain extent, you know, we all do that. That's just how, that's how we are. And it kind of shapes, it starts to shape who you are, how you present yourself to others. And, and I started to realize, well, you know, how we're defensive or what we're guarded about or what we're open about really starts to shape your personality, what kind of, what you let out and what you hold back starts to, you know, become your makeup. And then if you think about it that way, it's like, well, how much of who we are is an actual performance, what we're showing to others, what we're holding back from others. But what I realized is I can't control how people perceive me, you know, I, and and if I do, it's like expending a lot of energy that has very little kind of dividends. And, and so just be, you know, be free, have fun, and 
you, that's a, a lesson you would learn from being around Seth Rogen a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, I did. I learned <laughs> a lot. Big lesson from I you. learned a ton from Seth. Where he um, does not give a shit at all. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very open. I mean, I was really surprised early on that Seth, who's one of the hardest working people we know. But when he would be so open about his uh, lifestyle, yeah. shall we say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he truly didn't care because he has something that few of us have, self-esteem, which is weird. <laughs> but Seth has more self-esteem than all of us. Um, but it did allow him to go, hey, I'm just this guy, and I don't give a crap what you think of the fact that I do this or that. Yeah. And it is, it is in, in, infectious in some ways. Well, he also has, it's almost like he has... He also has nothing to be ashamed. He's not ashamed yeah. of anything, yeah. and so, um, and so that applies to who he is in life, right? That's a certain kind of attitude, and just like this is who I am. And then I think it also applies to performances. Where one thing I, I really learned from him, and you, you'd think it was like a simple lesson, but um, he, he'll say, "Well, I would never do a movie that uh, I wouldn't go see if I wasn't in it," yeah. and. I didn't like realize that you think like oh yeah, but I didn't. You know, I was like kind of a careerist or something. Like oh, I need to do this movie because it'll help my career. Oh, yeah, no, I don't like it, but you know, it'll help my career. And um, as soon as I learned that lesson, I really did learn it from Seth. Yeah. And it was like oh yeah, as soon as I follow that, it's like you know, I do movies I I care about and. Most of them, you know, find audiences that care about them too. Every once in a while, you know, it doesn't, but I don't have to be, it's like a double whammy when you do a movie that you don't care about and it doesn't do well. <laughs> you want to sell out, <laughs> you want it to do well, so. Exactly, so yeah. as, as long as you need to care about it, if it doesn't do well, it's fine. It's the audience's fault, they just didn't. <laughs> well, I always think uh, the test is when I'm home, and it's on cable, will I be ashamed of myself? <laughs> and if I don't think I'll be ashamed of myself, I'll be like, hey, that, that's a good one. And then I think that's a good reason to do that, it. That was also a lesson from Sean Penn. He just said, you know, it's like, um, it was one of those it's one of those race car movies. I can't think of what it is. Uh, not Cannibal Run, but something like that. And an Italian dude gets in the car, and he rips off the rear view mirror, and he throws it out of the window. And his partner's like, what are you doing? And he's like, where we're going, we don't need to look back. Yeah. And it's like that. You know you did everything for the right reasons and it doesn't do well. Yeah. Just keep going. Well, it seems like that lesson has uh, had a lot of impact on you just in terms of putting out all of the artistic work that you do because you have to have incredible courage to make yourself that vulnerable. Yeah. Because every time you do something, I mean, yeah. people... Most people, I, I, I found, they're just kind of ashamed to show themselves. And so when you do show yourself, uh, they can get really uncomfortable with it. Yeah. And that's why I think sometimes when people attack certain things, it's like you hit some nerve, and the nerve is that I'm, I'm blocked there. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're playing with that little scab that I have, and I don't like it. Right. You know, <laughs> in, in certain expressions. And so how has that been for you to just allow yourself to be judged so often. Because people talk about you doing so much, but what I think about is each time he does something, there's a reaction to it, and that takes, mm -hmm. you know, I'm glad I make a movie every two, three years, I could do it, you know, for that week, I'm okay. But I couldn't you do, do it, a lot, though. But I couldn't do it 10 times a year. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, um, I think there's a few things I could say about that, and also written in relation to us. There's the idea of doing other things that I care about. I mean, it's not, you know, like I'm moonlighting, like, yeah. you know, I, Ed was my teacher at Columbia. Like, I've gone and worked and put time into, you know, trying to be the best that I can at these other things. They're not just hobbies. I take them very seriously. But then the other side of that that I think is, um, I don't know, maybe can take people off guard or whatever, is this idea that Ed was talking about of, of how close can you put yourself uh, to the material, or how do you reveal self in the material? And it's actually something um, that I think you do a lot, and actually one of the books that you gave me on Freaks and Geeks, and I think you give it to a lot of people, but you should, because it's such a good book, 
I, it was um, a fan's notes oh, yeah. by Frederick Exley. And Which there's, Owen Wilson gave to me. Okay. That's a pay it forward type of book. Right. <laughs> and in that book, Exley basically uses himself as the protagonist. But it's still kind of framed in a way where it's like, it's not a memoir, you know, it's fiction, it's structured like a novel. And um, I really like that idea, you know, this book is not a memoir by any means. Like if I wanted to just say, this is what it was like on Freaks and Geeks, and this is what it was like on 27 Hours, I would, I would go do that, and this is definitely not that. But. I've gone back to the world of film and acting, this world that I know, um, and, and with, with the understanding that people will say, oh, this is probably close to him. Like, I'm definitely not, like, hiding, yeah. you know? And but isn't it every actor you dealt with over the years and in addition to that? Like, it's not all, you know, like, it's taken from your experience, but also you've dealt with a lot of actors. Yeah, well, I know actors. I know, the, yeah, I know the film business. And actors are crazy. <laughs> yeah, but every, I mean. I mean, we all are, but it takes a certain amount. I mean, I think of this for comedians, too. Like, if I do stand-up comedy, yeah. I do it because I am so insecure. <laughs> and I'm, and I, I dislike myself so much that I'm willing to risk standing in front of hundreds of people to get them to tell me I'm okay. <laughs> Even though they probably will tell me I'm not okay. But I need it more than I'm afraid of. And I'm really afraid of it. Right. Uh, you know, so that seems yeah. to be the thing where everyone is, did you start acting from an insecure place? Or did you start from a confident place? I see. Well, I think there's a few things I could say so I can talk about. Yeah, so I liked acting as a subject for several reasons. Um, one, I had been avoiding it. Yeah, I did, in my first book, it was called Palo Alto. It was just about teens in, in my hometown. I didn't put any acting in there or anything of my Hollywood life. And then I realized, well, I'm like avoiding this whole subject that I actually have a lot of insight into, you know? Like not, you know, everybody that's alive or lives past their teens was a teen, you know? And most people in this country have gone to high school. But not everybody has been on a TV show and done movies. And it was like, that is something I kind of specialize in. That's, that's some insider knowledge that I have. Why don't I use that? I mean, you know, Charles Bukowski's uh, first book is Post Office because he worked at the post office. Yeah. Why don't I just use that? And who cares if people say, well, it's an actor, writer. Like, that's what I am, and they're gonna throw it at me anyway, so why don't I just embrace this other side and this insider kind of perspective? The, then the other things that I get from using actors is, yes, they're crazy, they're, you know, they're extreme, you know? They deal with emotions, they put on masks. I, I could use that idea of, um, bringing my own life into fiction, but then the side of my own life where I actually wear masks. So it's like an unveiling and then a veiling because like the unveiling is showing how I put on the masks. Yeah. And um, What mask is this right now? <laughs> I'm just trying to, this is me talking to an old friend who's known me for a long time and trying to be honest and because um, my kids, anytime I do anything in front of people, just in terms of mass, they always go, Dad, every time you're in front of people, you kind of do this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my cover. Um, no, I mean, this is, this is, uh, but that is part of it's, what it's about. Is that when we first met, when you were uh, on your first television series, yeah. you know, a, a lot of what we felt when we, when we first met James, let me take a second to, to explain. Yeah. Uh, we were reading people uh, for Freaks and Geeks, and we took a novel approach to it, which was, let's just find interesting people and have Paul Feig rewrite the entire pilot, <laughs> based on who comes in. Uh, and, um, and very quickly, you know, Jason Siegel came in, and we were like, wow, that, he's unbelievable. And, and Seth came in, uh, and we saw Seth in Vancouver, and James came in, and instantly we said, okay, that guy's great. We actually said, 
we need to hire him quickly because he doesn't realize he shouldn't even take a TV show. <laughs> like, this is a mistake to just do this. Um, and then, uh, but we also didn't get any sense that anyone, that we just thought, this guy's fantastic. He, he, we were so excited. But we also didn't think he was attractive at all. Like, I, I didn't think you were good looking. I thought, I, I thought you were like weird looking. And, uh, and uh, you had like a big mouth and you were skinnier back then. And I thought, I get that you would be someone that women would like, but I didn't, I thought. And, and, and Leslie says, she sees the tape, and Leslie loved you, and she goes, he's like the sleazy guy who works at the gas station you make out with. <laughs> And, and we all thought, you know, this guy's incredible. As an actor and everything that you were doing, we were just very excited. Uh, but at the time, it also felt like it was a first experience for you, and you were just trying to figure out, like, how a set worked, how to communicate with people, yeah. what, what were the rules here, right. and then in between takes, you were reading the Iliad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had, left, I had dropped out of UCLA. Yeah. I was an English major. Yeah. And part of that, and I think part of even going back to school was that I had these other interests and so I was reading the you know I was reading that stuff partly because it was just you know I just loved it um, you know and when you gave me something like you know fans notes it was like yes I, this is this is a way that I I communicate with other people just by reading books is, is how I connect to other voices but also part of it was overcompensating for having left school. Yeah. And I was, and, and that troubled me for those, you know, seven years that I was acting. Because I would, I, would, I would write, I don't know if you remember, like I wanted to, to write and I would do it on my own. But it still felt like a, it felt like a mystery to me. It felt like what I was doing wasn't, um, like, le wasn't legitimate. And, um, well, I think you wanted to direct because you asked to to uh, shadow the director. Yeah. Jake said, "Can I come in every day at call and stay all day for this entire episode and just watch every second of shooting and then sit in on the editing?" Which I thought was great. And I, it, it is a it just showed a curiosity yeah. and, a, and and that you wanted to learn about it. And you realize, oh, I can get more out of this experience than just acting on the show. There's a whole other level. Yeah. To this, and I thought that was uh, the yeah, other, and smart. then the other side of it would, too is finally you and Paul Feig said, I think I, I think maybe I was a little annoying, or people thought I wanted to sit in on the writers' room because I wanted to like pad my part. Maybe that was part of it, but uh, <laughs> I think were getting too much attention or something. But I also wanted to see the process, and there was like a really valuable experience where you guys, it was just the two of you in your office. And he let me just sit on the couch. He said, okay, here's how it goes down. Yeah. And it was, I think it was like maybe even the Halloween episode. It was really early. I think maybe it was in the Halloween episode. And you're like, all right, here are the geeks. All right, maybe Neil says, well, I want to dress like this. And then maybe Sam says, well, you dress like that. You look like my, you know, my mother or something. And then, you know. And Bill says, whoa, 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 whoa. And then, you know, and you just, and you guys. a terrible impression. <laughs> And you guys, and, and it was a way to just kind of get a draft down, and you and then and then you're like, so here we now here's a scene, and then we can improve on that and edit it. But it was like, it was great to see how the voices just kind of came out and how a scene was at least a draft of a scene was constructed, and I think I've used that in, you know, everything I've written. It's just like, all right, just get it out, let yeah. it come out, and don't kind of like. <laughs> overthink it or keep it back <clears throat> because it's not perfect or whatever. Just get something out. Yeah. And um, and that's those are some of the things I, I learned about you know just <coughs> writing or whatever creating on Freaks and Geeks. And um, and but yeah, I was reading all the books because I felt like oh I I didn't have my diploma. Then I found like I, then I went back to school and I got it during. <laughs> Pineapple Express, I was getting my bachelor's, and I think a couple times I had to go to class in yeah. the wig, because there was like <laughs> no time, like, like I had time off, 
but there was not, not enough time to take the wig off, and then so I had to go in the wig to class. <laughs> I remember <laughs> saying that you could, yeah, and I remember saying to someone, well, they would, well, James can't shoot that day because uh, he's got a school. I'm like, don't you go to school to get the job? He has the job. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of people can understand, but it was like... We all get it now, but for the, the beginning, uh, uh, you know, there's something that is... I, I, I think in people's reaction to being so interested in school, uh, I, I, don't, I think we all hate school, don't we? And, uh, and so for someone to love it so much, uh, on one level, we think that that's insane, to love it so much. Uh, but then on another level, we think, oh, it's so great that you do that. And we all wish... We could do that, like in our lives. Like, wow, I would love to go back. I went to school for a year and a half. I'd love to go back and figure out uh, how the cameras work again. <laughs> and, I still don't know. Uh, and that it, it does make perfect sense, but I don't think most people have the chance to do it. And you've taken advantage of it in such a yeah. massive way. Well, the great thing about—I mean, I've been to a lot of different kinds of schools. The great thing about writing graduate writing programs is and this is not great for writers, um, is that most writers teach because they, you know, novelists teach to supplement their, their income, I guess. Uh, or maybe they just love it. And um, so I had, like, all my favorite writers as my teachers. Yeah. And it was like heaven. I mean, it was, yeah. it was like... It was like when, I, when Oliver Stone spoke at USC when I was there. And it's like a life-changing moment to sit and, like, have him... Yeah, exactly. But but I have them as regular teachers, yeah. like they, you know, and it's it was akin to you know being on a you know a great show like Freaks and Geeks or being directed by Danny Boyle or you know Gus Van Sant or whatever. It's like you have somebody of that caliber in the writing field as your teacher, and you get to be close with them and work with them, and they read your work. And it was like this is you know this is exactly what I wanted. You know when I was that like 19 year old, 20 year old saying, hey guys, can I just watch, you know, you write. It was like getting to learn from, you know, your hero. So it was, it was awesome. That's why, that's one of the reasons I loved it so much. And, and now that you've done so much, you're, 